Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number two of the 64 and a half Mustang convertible. It's a monogram Revel kit and uh, so far it's a real nice kit. Uh, the car just came out of the spray booth so everybody's gathered around. So let's move them out of the way and we'll, uh, whoops, we'll get to talking about <laughs> Everything that happened yesterday. Chandler, you gotta go too, buddy. Well, here we go. We got our, our light metallic blue paint with a dark blue interior. And I'm really happy with that. I mean, I am really happy. The, uh, the white uh, convertible top's gonna look really good with that light blue. But... All good things must have a little bad with them. This is the second uh, the second time through the spray booth for the light blue here. Yesterday, I used, like I was telling everybody, I was going to use X14. And I did, and it sprayed well. Everything looked good. I moved it off to the side. And when I turned back around, the hood, the trunk and both sides of this were all peppered badly. <laughs> and as soon as I saw it, I knew it was my fault because I washed this in Dawn. I sanded it with 2000 grit sandpaper. And then when I went over to the spray booth, I didn't wipe it down with alcohol. And I think a little bit of the uh, releasing solution was on it. So a quick drop into my LA Awesome, and I figured it'd take overnight to uh, to strip it at least overnight. And I dropped this thing in, <laughs> in the LA Awesome, and I had enough to cover about up to here. <laughs> so I added a bunch of really hot water to it, and when I did that, the whole vat turned baby blue. I'm like, oh, wow. So I put on my gloves and went over, and I swished it a little bit, and I pulled this out of the water, and it looked just like it came out of the mold. There wasn't a, any blue paint on it whatsoever, not any. So it stripped within seconds, which was good. I washed it off. I cleaned it with Dawn again. I rinsed it a bunch of times with soapy water. Then I came back, and just before I put it on the spray booth, I wiped it down with 91% rubbing alcohol just to be safe again, and it sprayed really nice. Um, what this color is is not what it started out to be because, to be honest with you, on this car, I hated this color. It was too dark. Um, didn't really look great with the interior like I wanted it to. So I'm kind of, it's like a happy mistake. I would have lived with it if it didn't pepper the hood and everything. So I'm kind of glad it did because what I did is, and look at how nice that looks with the, uh, the interior, the dark blue interior. But what I did is I took my baby blue or sky blue X14 and I put three pipettes of the sky blue in a cup and I put one pipette of chrome silver in the cup and that's what it gave me and I like it it's a metallic light blue so it, it's still kind of on the dark side but I'm not gonna worry about it because I like it a lot I like it with the interior so this going to go well. It looks good with the white top. So I'm happy with that. Everything went good. So like I said, if it wouldn't have peppered, I would have lived with this. And it would have been one of those where it's like, yeah, it's okay. But now I'm, I'm really happy. And it is. It's a, it's a bit lighter, but it's got that metallic look that I wanted. So this is the, the Thunderball car was, was lighter than that baby blue just by a little bit. 
So, and if you look at, if you watch James Bond Thunderball, that's what this car is. That's what I'm going for. Um, I thought it was black interior. I watched, I didn't really want to do another black interior. I watched it and watched a few times and realized it is dark blue. So I used the X4 dark blue or just Tamiya blue in there. And like I said, when I'm, let, I'm let this dry a few days and then I'm going to take the dark blue, the X4, and I'm going to mix it with XF1 flat black. And, uh, That'll darken it down, it'll flatten it out, and that's what I'm gonna paint this carpet with. Now, the rubber mat and the everything there will get painted the uh, the semi-gloss. But this I wanna flatten out, and I wanna darken up even more, which will darken the whole interior a little bit. So, that went really well. Um, what I did is I used the uh, that new Mobius, this is the 0.3 millimeter um, Mobius airbrush from Gallery. Worked great. Uh, I sprayed this. I, I sprayed everything really yesterday with the uh, with the 0.3. And since I had it out, I even sprayed the body with it today. Um, I tried to use the swallowtail with the with the fan brush or the fan tip on it, and I just didn't care for the way it was working. I need to practice more with that. So I just went with what I know and I used the point three because it was set up. But got a good color on this. I'll let it dry for three or four or five days. We'll get a good polish on it and then we'll hit it with three or four coats of quick shine and that'll really bring it up to where it's supposed to be. The uh, chassis. I sanded off the made in China on the side where they could have put it back here and I would have left it alone. So I sanded that off. I I know this was supposed to be um, the zinc oxide red primer, but I couldn't get that mix to look right. What I need to do is get some zinc oxide primer and spray it on a piece of uh, placard. And that way I can mess around and mix it to where it's just right. But I just didn't care for the way it was looking. So I went ahead and I sprayed it the, uh, the semi-gloss black. I'll come back in here and everything that's not rails, I'll hit with the uh, accent, uh, real black, and that'll give it a good flat coat. And then we'll do the tank, the aluminum, like I always do, we'll run our hoses. The uh, brake lines are already here and they go up and disappear up underneath the chassis, which I still will have to paint that the flat black too. So they drop in there. The fuel line comes out and just kind of disappears. We'll run that around to where it's supposed to go. Make that look good. We'll run our brake lines up on here and they'll, they'll look really good. So we're cruising right now. Um, there's our chassis. Not a lot to talk about the chassis. I glued angry Spock down while I was at it. <laughs> so, oh, 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 and next week we should have the Texaco logo on the back of everybody's jersey. I got it printed. I just need to uh, clear coat it, and those will be done. So let's jump in here with the engine. The engine I went with gloss black, and I did a gloss black transmission. I don't like the transmission. I'm going to go with the uh, flat aluminum with that. Um, I told you everybody that I saw an engine being pulled out of a car that was the black and it had a black transmission, but I just don't like it. It's going to be way too much of one color underneath. So I think with the, uh, just the black on black on black with the aluminum, it'd just be too much. So we'll do that, the flat aluminum, and I think that'll look good. But the gold came out real good. I painted that with the uh, the point three also. And as a matter of fact, I got a little cut here of me doing it. And it just, it sprays so nice. That that thing is so good. I even have a cut of me doing the, uh, the black. And here's that. And that's just with the point uh, three millimeter two with the gloss black thinned out half and half. Painted up real nice. 
So I got that going. I'm looking here. I took the uh, air cleaner. I painted it gold with the black. And remember, I hollowed that thing out. So it, it's looking the part. But then yesterday I took um, my new panel liner, the thin stuff, and I did a panel liner on there just on the top just to give it a little bit of life because it was kind of monotone. Um, not to dirty it up, but to just highlight some of the, the shadows in it. So that I'm really happy with. The carburetor, I painted just flat aluminum so far. And I cannot believe they chrome this thing because the chrome made so much of the detail disappear. I mean, you got your, your little fuel pump linkage and everything in here. Our linkage is set up to where all I have to do is run a line and a spring. On the other side, our choke looks so good. I mean, all I have to do is run the, uh, the heater hose down across that, and that one's set. I drilled a hole in the front of the bowl for the uh, fuel line. And then on the engine, I drilled the heater hoses on the top and in the side. I did a vacuum line on the intake for the vacuum advance. Um, we, I like this look. Man, do I like this look. Our exhaust manifolds are so sharp. I did a gunmetal on those. And with that black, my goodness, does that look good. So I'm trying to make it to where it fits in there. And I'm having a heck of a time because I don't have my visor. But I think that looks really good. Um, there we go. I'm trying to way out there. Um, I also drilled all the holes for the spark plugs. I'll poke those in one more time before we glue these on. Um, I'll run a, the lines in there. I'll slide this down over the lines, glued in place, and then we'll run the lines around to the front. Uh, I promised I would do a video on me doing a Ford engine, so I haven't forgotten that. We're going to start with it painted, and I'll show you the, how I drill it out. Um, I'll also do the, the radiator hoses too and, and show you where and why on those too. But we'll do the, uh, it won't be a long video like my first one, but it'll be a video on how to wire um, the Ford engine. Detail out the wazoo with this thing. Hood came out pretty good. Again, it's going to need polished, but looks good. I like that metallic on here a lot. Oh, uh, let's see here. My alternator, man. I mean, these things are really nicely detailed. Look at the little fan on there, how nice that came out. And that's just flat aluminum with a quick shot of panel liner. Light shot of panel liner. Um, I had to make a coil because this kit doesn't have one. So all I did was found the smallest piece of sprue I had tapered the end, drilled a hole in it, and then tapered it, and then just painted it gloss black. It'll go in there on the engine. Uh, we'll run the wire. Everything's set up for that. And now, let's jump back into the chrome here. I did another coat on the radiator, I or on the, on the grill. It was just a little bit too... Uh, let me bring this in here. There we go. It was it was showing a little bit too much chrome on there. So I did that. I touched up my gauge cluster. And then I hit it with Mod Podge. Here's a picture of it with the Mod Podge. And then a picture of it when the Mod Podge dried. And that's just um, one coat of clear Mod Podge. Gives that a nice uh, glass look over the top. The backup lights, like I said, I did um, the flat white, then panel liner, then let it sit, and then a quick shot of, uh, drop a quick shine in there just to uh, give it that plastic look. So we're good to go now. The gas cap, um, Bruce, let me get that in here. 
I'm trying to see in my camera. Um, Bruce, the guy that sent me this from Bruce's Eclectic uh, World, bet me I couldn't get the red and white and blue in there. So here's a picture, Bruce. Uh, it's as good as I can do. <laughs> that is as small as small can get, and I at least got the red and the blue in there. So, but if you can see it just by looking, you got better eyes than I do. <laughs> but there we go. Like I said, I did a lot of prep work yesterday, um, basic painting, getting everything ready. Got my decals going for my guys. We're getting pretty much set to start doing the fine detail work. And I'll start with the engine. Before I go up, I'm going to paint this to flat aluminum. So when I come back down here this week, we can start doing the wiring. And uh, we'll get this thing rolling. So with that, I guess I'm going to let you go. Um, nothing else going on except for a lot of good luck after a little bit of bad luck. So I'll let you go. Y'all have a great day, a better tomorrow, and I'll see you soon. Thank you again for watching.